Well good, off. well, good afternoon, everybody. I hope you're having a good day today, considering we've had, we have had rain this morning, on and off through this day, just sprinkling, but it's been a good day for us here in Cardiff anyway. So wherever you are, I hope you're having a lovely day so far. I just wanted to show you an update to you on what I've been doing today, that I've actually got something done. And that is um, that. We no longer have a lawn okay I decided because buttons darling canine um, suddenly developed an aversion for using the lawn for toileting she couldn't stand it because it's at this time of the year it's got all wet and it's slippery and it's cold so she doesn't like stepping on the wet grass you believe it a dog doesn't want to go on the wet grass she's such a girly girl that dog but anyway so she started using the vegetable garden um, and last night I caught her running across the bed just oh sorry you can't see in the sunshine she was running across the bed and I thought oh no so and I had to clean up a couple of piles on the path so I thought no 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 so she doesn't want the lawn we get rid of it because the lawn was there because Buttons likes to sun herself in the summer and it was a convenient place to toilet and clean up but um, it's been no different cleaning up on the bark chipping paths so the lawn is gone I've used more than half of the pile of wood chips which is now given us a clear path back to the composter again um, there was absolute clumps of mycelium you can see there the white stuff there clumps of mycelium in the wood chips and the big matted bits that I found I put in the composters over there and then covered it with more wood chips and cardboard um, so hopefully it'll carry on growing and spreading through the compost the pond has filled itself again with all the rain that we've had so I will in the next month or so whenever I get a spare moment start working on getting rid of that because this is going to become our outdoor cooking area so um, yeah that's got to go the birds have been loving where I've put the new po uh, ponds over there the little water features because they've been standing on the edges of the the tubs and splashing like bath in and then of course I put that um, watering tray at the back with water and they've been using it so much more than they used the pond for drinking and bath in so they're happy with where it's situated now which makes me happy they're happy about that and then of course now that this is down I will get a big nine foot round circular carpet um, for the the pond the not the pond the pool when it goes up in the spring because that will be a kind of backup water for the garden as well but um, at least if I put it here and get a water pump that can split three ways I can pump and filter all of the water both in the pool and in those ponds and avoid getting algae so um, yeah and because I'm going to mark out exactly the right size circle that we need in this lawn area for the pool for next year around the outside of that circle I am going to put in the Chester berries and apple trees spaced out and I will grow like an arbor over the top of what will be the pool area during the summer months so that the um, the apples will grow into a little folly type thing I think I've got one two three four five apple trees left so that'll do fine that'll make a nice folly type arbor over the top so that there'll be kind of dappled shade for the pool to cover it and also a nice garden feature even through the winter when the pool is not up and it'll um, be a good it'll keep the, the pond in because it's only it's only got an inflatable rim and it's the water that keeps it up so if I put carpet underneath and carpet around the sides inside of the tree circle then it'll keep the pool from flopping and keep it in a nice shape and then the trees growing over the top will make a nice um, shaded arbor too 
so that's killing quite a few tasks in one go with that so and of course I don't know if you can see it from here but let me move further back the level of the ground is leveling out because I have got way more up to 10 inches of bark this side and only four to five inches that side so it's leveling out the slope more as well see that bed was a big mound which is now level the ground is now level with the top of the bed which means I've raised the this garden area up quite a bit and I think over the years as I keep adding on the wood chips it will continue to level out that so it's not so much of a slope anymore um, so now I will continue to pile up compost on this bed to raise the level um, but it does mean I'm going to have to build a retaining wall along this side and I've had some thoughts on that so keep an eye out for what's going to happen here on the paths I raked back all the wood bark chippings that were on the surface and then I raked all the soil underneath because that is all the wood chips that had composted down so after I'd com after I'd raked it all up I put it all over the beds because I can't afford to get compost now at this time of year no spare money left now um, so I just put all of that soil slash composted bark chop chips um, on top of the soil to mulch it for the winter as you can see I still need more because the soil is starting to come through the compost or rather the compost is sinking into the soil the worms are taking it down so it needs another mulch so I will try and find more soil and I will have more because I'll show you in a minute I'm not done with all the other paths so anyway I did all of that mulched this side over there as well with what I um, raked up and then put new bark chips down so this is no longer it was starting to get muddy so I knew it was needing to be done so it's no longer muddy I have new bark chips down on that path so I can walk it through the winter and double check that the guttering is clear um, I didn't need to do this bed this path and that path because it was already done the cherry tree is losing all its leaves now I don't mind leaves on the bark paths because it doesn't matter on there however I'm waiting until the tree sheds all its leaves before I bother just shoved, shoving that back up on the bed around the cherry tree um, it can stay there it doesn't matter it'll more it'll um, mulch and feed the soil ready for next year for that tree and all the other bushes in there um, so for now I don't mind the leaves being on the path until the tree has shed all its leaves and then I'll tidy it up the only path I will keep clear of leaves is the concrete path because it will become slippery right um, I also did this small section here between the drain and the path I raked all the top stuff off and then raked at least two to three inches down of the soil and put it on top of this bed where I've just put more soil and there between all the chard and beetroot so that's be had mulch and added soil on top it's full of mycelium still the full of worms so I know that it's good stuff and it's not going to harm the plants because it's been down a year and um, there's already worms working in it and mycelium so it's not going to harm the plants in the soil now because they're not seedlings anyway um, so then it gave me enough um, depth to put down new bark chips over here so this is no longer muddy and there's new and I haven't put up too much of a height there by the path because I was worried about piling and piling and piling on the bark chips and with it running off onto the path so that is now done there's just that path there between that drain and that drain that needs to be done now because I can't put more bark chips on it's already covered the drain cover on that side um, so that'll give me enough soil to um, make, get more mulch for the other side of the bed uh, behind me uh, and I'll put new bark chips down there um, I did that path as well there because I didn't want it to come higher up and rot the wood on the trellis so I raked that all down by three inches three to four inches um, that has all gone onto the beds so this bed now all the way has got a lovely layer of mulch good stuff there's still mycelium in there and loads of worms so I know it's going to be fine and then I put new bark chips all along there the water bats are both full 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 so I put a hose pipe onto the guttering there and that is going straight down into the drain which is a total waste 
but at least it's not soaking into the ground and making a mess of the garden. I want to show you this as well. We also managed to get a little bit of a trip hazard, but as long as everybody's aware, it'll be fine. Okay, so we put a hose pipe onto the tap. So when it's raining too much and it's full, I just open it, it goes into the downpipe, and down there off that fascia board into the drain. So we solved the problem of it going down the side of the path and into the soil over there. We were worried about it eventually breaking up the concrete and doing harm there and making a bog of the bed behind these pots. So, yep, the excess water can be drained off to the drain. And I would only do that until there's about that much of water in the, t in the butt. And then I'll close it off again. And when it starts raining, I keep an eye on it just to keep it going. I don't want to empty the water back because we'll have a bit of dry weather now for a couple more days. And I still want to water under the cover. So, yeah. Still more to be done in here as far as earthing up the carrots. These tomatoes need sorting. There are still plants drying there that need sorting. Those nasturtiums, look at them, they're still going strong. I'm going to put loads of little pansies and things in that tub there to keep it bright and cheery and pretty through the winter. And those baskets, they look sad. They're going to get pansies and all in there and some ornamental cabbages and kales because those, even though they're ornamental, they're perfectly edible and beautiful. The sweet potatoes are looking sad now, so it might be time to harvest them. And um, yep, so that's what we've been doing today. I feel good that we've got more jobs done in the garden. Uh, oh yes, also an update on um, the monies handed out from the walking stick, that the money we raised. I gave, handed over the um, 60 pounds of that money to um, six one, group 617 last night at um, a candle lighting ceremony at, one, at the Cenotaph in Barry, and then today I went up to Woody's Lodge and handed over their share as well. So the only one left to give now is Cardiff Breakfast Club on Saturday when we go over there. So then that will be done, and I've asked them to, just for accountability's sake, leave a, um, a, a note of um, acknowledgement that they've had their payments on the Whitler's page, just so people know that they've had their payments and everything's above board and we've been able to then because of other people close friends family who have bid and made offers um, been able to help those groups out a little bit and Woody's Lodge have said that they will use that 60 pound towards getting equipment for the woodworking shop that they have they're situated on the Amelia Trust Farms grounds and they have some workshops there and there are gardens and also so the workshops they're going to be putting to use for veterans to be able to learn woodworking and do some projects um, and they'll put that money towards a few tools for that so at least we know where some of that money is going to be used um, and that's really lovely so there you go update on that I'll make another video later tonight because I want to just in case I don't get another chance I want to do one on storage look at that buttons is eating the catnip buttons stop eating the catnip you're not a cat what is it you're getting from the catnip hmm? in your old age is it pain relief or just downright does it work the same for doggies as it does for cats why are you eating the catnip you guilty look at that guilty face Yes. All right. I don't mind you eating the other. Why are you eating the catnip? I don't want you getting sick. I don't know what it'll do to you, Muppet. Oh. Don't look at me like that. No. There you go. Stupid dog, but probably very clever. There you are. Anyway, oh, one last thing before I finish because I've got to go and have a shower and get supper done. The Jerusalem artichoke stalks, I decided instead of using a cross, I would put them here because there are natural branch bits here that I could tie string to and tie these to because this is not very strong. There's no um, metal or anything inside the hoops. So if I tie it to there, it'll keep it more sturdy and keep it upright. 
so there is natural hooks I could use to hook the string to and tie it to the, um, the hoops and then the bamboo that I harvested from my wild foraging a couple of was it two months ago now that I could use to strengthen across the sides and the top to put the construction netting over um, so hopefully that will protect the cabbages and things through the winter from the pigeons that will be looking for, for winter food. Um, if I had massive big fields, I wouldn't mind losing a couple of cabbages to them, but this is all we have. And considering what's left of them, I need to protect what's left. So yes, I still come every day picking off the odd caterpillar. Look at that. They still show up. Where they come from, I have no idea. Look at that. Oh, and they puke up on you something terrible like that, and it stinks. But they go up in the composter. I'll let nature deal with them. If they survive, they survive. If, if all the other critters eat them, then it's one less infestation for next year. There you are. So that's an update for now. I'm going to put them in the composter and then wash my hands. Yes, buttons. No, you can't eat the caterpillars, it stinks. There you go. Oh, this goji berry here. I lifted the mass out of the pot, put some of the bark chips full of mycelium at the bottom, uh, put it back in, and then mulched around the top with more bark chips. So hopefully that goji berry will be nice and healthy next year. This oak sapling is one that grew from the allotment. Look how tall it's grown this year. And we brought that home from the allotment when we finished up there. It grew in the beds and it's just jumped up. And um, there's another one over there. That was a little sapling from birds burying the acorns in the beds at the allotment. Um, there's another one over there still tiny but I'm really surprised how fast this one's grown that has been so fast and grown so big so very happy with that I will make sure I train it and keep it for as long as we possibly can until we can find a permanent home for it because obviously an oak tree will be very very big um, but I'm going to nurture and look after that as long as we can if we can train it to stay small enough for our garden then I'll do that kind of bonsai like in pots of course it'll shorten the lifespan but they do live very very long but if we can then harvest some of the green wood for using for whittling then that'll be dual purpose as well and the leaves oak leaves especially make wonderful leaf mold for um, ericaceous loving plants so there you go Everything in this garden has to have multiple purposes. Buttons, get off the beds. Seriously. I'm going to have to put a fence across here and some little gates to get in the paths, aren't I? Hmm. Yes, because that's not a toilet or an adventure park to jump all over the beds. So, things in here need watering again. And it's not too bad, actually. I'll leave it until tomorrow. Um, I still haven't dealt with the mint, but we'll do. They're surviving, though. The strawberries are surviving the transplant. Everything else is still alive and waiting to be put out. So, Oh, and I discovered here as well, look at that. Lettuces growing around the sweet potato. So, that's a dual-purpose use for that soil. While we're waiting for sweet potatoes for next year, I can use it for lettuce this year through the winter still haven't potted up planted sown my um microgreens yet but we'll do that's coming up next lots of stuff to do under here but craft fair start this week our first one on saturday um so now that i've done some gardening for this week that'll be enough for this week um and i will carry on with the crafts for the rest of the week now and um obviously keeping up with the washing and cooking in the house but nothing much else oh of course and the grandchildren come in to sleep over but other than that it's all going to be craft 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 other than tonight's video I will put on about food storage to do with grains I think I'm going to talk about grains tonight so I'll see you later speak to you soon all bye bye